Hi folks! I've often been asked to show how to make an AM radio transmitter, something that will transmit radio waves for my homemade crystal radio to receive. Sort of like my own mini radio station. But it works for a normal AM radio too. Here's how to make it. I'm using this super simple circuit which I found on the sci-toys.com website. And here's a diagram of the same circuit, but showing how I wired it up with the parts that I used. The parts you need are a small transformer, an oscillator chip, a sound source, I'm using a CD player, and a jack for plugging into the sound source. This oscillator chip needs around 5 volts to power it, so I'm using four 1.5 volt AA batteries and a battery holder to put them in. I'm using a breadboard to connect the chip into the circuit, and I also need a few wires. Solid 24 gauge wire works well with my breadboard holes. Where do you get the transformer? This one is a doorbell transformer, which I got from a local electronics store. A lot of places that sell household electrical parts will have it. Even better would be an audio transformer, which you can order online. For example, from the SciToys.com website. I'll put a link in the description below this video. And this one I took from a control board inside a microwave oven. What about the oscillator chip? You need one that oscillates in the range of AM radio frequencies. That's around 540 kilohertz to 1.6 megahertz. SciToys.com sells one that's 1 megahertz. I couldn't find one locally in that range, but I found one at 1.8 megahertz, which my crystal radio was able to tune into. But normal AM radios can't tune into 1.8 megahertz, though there's a trick you can use which I'll show you later. Again, here's a diagram of what I'm doing. First, I attach all the parts to a wooden board to make it portable. I hot glue the breadboard to the middle, then the battery holder, and lastly I screw on the transformer. I start by plugging the chip into this middle section of the breadboard. Notice that the chip has four pins sticking out of the bottom. They're very delicate, so be careful not to bend them when you put them in. I put them here in my breadboard for a reason. Anything I plug into these holes will be electrically connected to the pin in this hole. Anything I plug into these holes will be connected to the pin in this hole. And anything I plug into these holes will be connected to the pin in this hole. Now look carefully at the chip. Notice that it has three rounded corners and one squared corner. The pin at the squared corner doesn't do anything. But use that corner to orient yourself with the diagram. I'm going to show the breadboard so that the orientation of the chip is the same as in the diagram, with the squared corner at the top left. Now take a wire and plug one end into this hole. I'm using a red wire because ultimately that one will go to the positive of the battery, and red usually means positive. Plug the other end into this hole. That connects this pin and this row to this entire row of holes. Take another wire and plug one end into this hole. That row goes to the antenna pin, or the radio output pin, that's at that corner of the oscillator chip. Plug one end of another wire into this hole. I'm using black because that pin is for the earth ground and the negative of the battery or power source. Black usually means negative. And plug the other end here. That connects this pin and this row to this entire row of holes. Next we need some power. I'm using four AA batteries connected in series. Put the batteries in the way the holder indicates. Done. The result is four batteries in series. Coming out of the battery holder is a red positive wire and a black negative wire. Plug the negative into this hole here. All the holes in this row are connected together, so you just connected the battery negative to this pin. Now we need some way to plug into the sound source, a CD player in my case. You'll plug into the place where you normally plug into to get sound, the earphone hole. So you need to find a jack of the right type. I got these from Radio Shack. Opening one up, I can see that there are three places to connect to. You'll want to connect to the longest of these connections, this one, and either of the shorter connections. Here I'm soldering small wires to them. Then I screw the cover back on. Plug one of the jack wires into this hole. Which color wire you use doesn't matter. Plug the other jack wire into this hole and plug the jack into the sound source, in my case the earphone hole in my CD player. The next step is to connect up the transformer and requires some trial and error. The transformer has two wires coming out of one coil and usually three wires coming out of the other coil. Ignore the middle of the three wires. The transformer can be connected in two different ways, either with these two wires going to the sound source and these two going to the rest of the transmitter circuit, or the other way around. To find out which way, I just try them both. Lucky for me, the wires for my transformer fit nicely into my breadboard holes. So I'm trying this way first. I plug either of these wires into this hole that connects this wire to the jack. Then I plug the other wire into this hole which connects to the other wire of the jack. Then I plug one of these wires into this hole which will connect it to the positive of the batteries in a minute. 
And I plug the other wire into this hole, which connects it to this wire and then this pin of the oscillator chip. Lastly, the final connection to make is to plug the positive of the batteries here. That turns on the transmitter. Time to test. I turn on the CD player. I've removed the long antenna wires from my crystal radio and left just this short one. I arrange it so it's near the antenna wire from the transmitter and listen on the crystal radio's earphone for the music. You may have to do some tuning with the crystal radio's tuning capacitor and tuning coil. If you hear music, then great, but I don't. So I turn off the CD player and I disconnect the positive wire from the breadboard so that I don't use up the batteries needlessly. I then disconnect all the wires from the transformer and turn it around. I connect the wires that were previously going to the jack to the rest of the transmitter circuit. And then I connect these wires that were going to the rest of the transmitter circuit to the jack instead. Exactly the same thing I did before, but with different transformer wires. Now I plug the positive voltage wire back into the breadboard and turn on the CD player. And try to hear it in the crystal radio's earphone again. This time I hear it. It works. It's faint, but I put it in the camera's microphone so you can hear it. And what about a normal AM radio? Normal AM radios can tune into only 540 kilohertz to 1.6 megahertz, but I'm sending on 1.8 megahertz. However, I can do a trick and divide 1.8 megahertz, 1,800,000 by two to get 900,000 or 900 kilohertz, which is in the AM range. And here's what happens when I tune into 900 kilohertz. 900 kilohertz is a subharmonic of 1.8 megahertz. Using harmonics works too. Now for some improvements. The longer the transmitter's antenna wire, the better the result. But you don't want it too long, since you don't want to interfere with your neighbor's radio. So if you can get it to transmit only a few feet, then you're probably okay. So here I have a longer wire for the transmitter's antenna. And here's the crystal radio's very short receiver antenna. And the result is surprisingly good for such a short receiver antenna. But here I've reconnected my longer wire antennas to my crystal radio. Now the result is even louder since I've improved the receiving side. Here I'm using a normal AM radio with the long antenna on the transmitter. And the last improvement is to connect the negative side of the batteries to earth ground. In my case, my crystal radio already has a convenient ground connection I can connect to. It didn't seem to make much difference for me though. What about using something like an iPod or iPhone as a sound source? Those aren't very powerful, less powerful than my CD player. So you may have a hard time getting them to transmit far without adding an amplifier circuit to the transmitter. But you're welcome to try and let me know in the comments how well it goes. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more videos like this. That includes one on how to make the homemade crystal radio I used in this video. Another one on how to make the crystal earphone I was putting in my ear. For that, I use a piezo speaker from a microwave oven. And for variety, one on how to make a lifter, or Ionocraft, that flies using ion wind. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. Bye for now.